Sunday Kel. Hi. Uh, you've won, you've qualified, you've won the group, scored six goals, clean sheet, and I think it's the biggest <coughs> win at the Emirates since you took over. I mean, is this your perfect evening? Is this yeah. what you dream of? It was, uh, I didn't even dream like this, but uh, yeah, we had the chance to qualify today and become top of the group. We've done it, we've done it I think, in, a, in a really convincing way against a, a really good side. And uh, I think the team right from the beginning showed uh, a lot of aggression and determination to, to go for the game. And uh, yeah, everything happened uh, in the right way, especially in the first uh, 30 minutes. And, and that was really helpful to, to win the game. How much does it mean to get it? sorted with a game to spare. How much does that mean for your players in terms of resting them with Christmas and the, the Christmas fixtures coming up? Well, I don't know. Let's see how we get to, to that game. And now the, the job is done uh, with what we wanted to achieve. But every time we play a full match, we want to win it and we'll prepare it in, in the best possible way. But it gives us some room, certainly, uh, in relation to the state of the, the squad um, to use certain players, more or less. Okay, well, you suggested... You suggested in the news conference that Arsenal made a statement performance in the Champions League, which is that it? Well, it's, it's great that we are able to win this way, but I think the consistency we've shown at, at home as well, you know, to not concede any goals and, and score a lot of goals, that's a really positive factor. And I think those players need to have those experiences and, and believe that we can do it against the big opponents. And, uh, and now, let's wait. Now we have to park it, and in February, we we'll know who we are facing and, and let's see how we are in that moment. Nick from the Guardian. Mikhail, there was a moment in injury time when you were 6 0 up and their striker is trying to shoot and Gabriel tackles him and celebrates it like a goal. You must have loved that. What did that say about the sort of attitude and application of the team tonight? Yeah, when the team has that body language, he's living every game, uh, every action the way we do, good things are going to come. And, uh, and it's like the crowd, they wanted more, you know, and they celebrated and they played every single ball with us. And when there is that connection, uh, it's really powerful. The, the team wants to win, doesn't want to concede anything, and that's the mentality that we need to, to become better. Seth, we got it. Mikhail, you spoke yesterday about traffic and teams sitting very deep. Was this tonight an example of what you can do when you've got that motorway and that space to... Yeah, it's a different kind of game, but I talked about game state, and uh, that's a crucial thing as well, and it's true that they have a different behaviour to, to many teams, in, especially in our face phase of build-up, because they are really aggressive and maybe a man-to-man, -man. and we explored that really, really well today, I think. If you were playing against Arsenal, how would you do it? I'm not going to tell you, that's for sure. Chris, the gentleman there. Mr. um you changed the um, uh, dummy ass at half-time. Uh, is there any reason for that? And also, um, how do you think about his performance uh, to assist tonight? Uh, I think he was excellent. Uh, he's played a lot of minutes and uh, and we have a really congested period. We are very short at the back at the moment and uh, and we had to use the the score um, to make some changes and, and give some rest and, and as well minutes to other players. Hi Miguel, we seem to talk every week about what a skillful player Mikhail Saka is, but the, the sheer force of will to create that second goal for Gabriel Jesus, does that almost say more about him? And else he yeah, that's a different edge, you know, to to score ugly goals as well and be involved in these actions that uh, that gives an advantage to to your teammate and uh, and he did it as well against Burnley when he won the header for Leo and that's a, a different kind of aggression that uh, that is going in his game and and that's a, a really positive thing to see. That's another goal for him in the Champions League, really proving himself in this position. How happy are you with? Yeah, with him, with everybody. Gabi Jesus as well, I think, is in a tremendous form in, in Champions League. Today we share, I think, was six different scores, no? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so that's great that, that, that the team has this capacity. Um, Kai again scored two goals in two games, and uh, that's really good for, uh, for the confidence of the players. Mikel, just on Kai Havertz, he obviously came off the bench and was the hero last weekend. Um, and then he scored the, the goal that broke the deadlock today. Have you noticed the difference in him in terms of his confidence and, and how he's carrying himself maybe, having come into this good run of form? Yes, yeah, scoring goals, playing well, uh, participating in, in wins, those are positive attributes. Uh, you see the reception of his teammates, the crowd singing his name and being with him in every positive action that he had. That's all good things that are going to help him to, to show why he is he's a tremendous player. Mikhail, I think that's the first time you've been able to name that midfield three and forward three in the starting lineup this year. Is that the grand plan you've been waiting five months to, to unveil? 
Well, I think we have different uh, options and in relation to to the opponents as well that we are facing. We have at uh, today we we were really attacking because we play with Alex as well in the back line, uh, and we need it uh, because we want to approach the game to to win it and and be very dominant from the beginning. I think we have uh, achieved that. We're going to ask you, gentlemen, to cap at that game. Uh, Mikel, what are your thoughts on the way Declan Rice has settled in from a tactical and technical perspective? He seems to have really settled into the side over the last few years. Yeah, he was joining me literally, but what are your thoughts on that from technical and tactical? Yeah, he was superb today again. Uh, the consistency that he's showing, you know, the understanding of the game, I think the the decision making all the time and then the, the action and and uh, and the timing that he's got to to win the ball back, to, to give line of pass, to break the the team, the speed that it plays when the, the ball gets um, around him, I think he's been so good. Okay, the score is very strong. Did you have a feeling of revenge because you lost in in France the first game? No, it was the feeling of what we learned, you know, with with that defeat and defeats um, give you a lot of things to to think about and and take the learnings from from that. Uh, credit to them, they are a really good side, you know, and they are extremely well coached and they make life very very difficult for you. But today we were really effective. And finally, we're going to Alex Clay. Mikel, I just want to ask you about. Captain Martin Odegaard, obviously he's been through a lot the last few weeks with injury and illness and some people might have expected with the scoreline him to maybe get a break but he, I think he was the last player off the pitch <coughs> after the final whistle as well. I imagine you'd have had to drag him off. He was always going to play 90 minutes. Yeah, but we have five subs and we are very short in certain areas as well. And then we had to prioritize uh, who to rest. And um, and as well, he hasn't accumulated that many minutes in the last six or seven weeks. So we asked him how he was. He was fine. And uh, he managed himself a bit in the second half and he was fine. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.